We are coming to a conclusion of our series dedicated to the abnormal spike protein related clots and in this particular video we're going to be talking about how potentially doctors could be measured whether the, cl the unusual clotting is, is being affected in an individual or not. So why, why is this an important one? And again, this comes from the information of the authors that have been publishing most of this information, which is those South African authors. And basically the issue is that there is no biomarkers, easy biomarkers that we could be used to really determine if a person's clotting is affected or not. Why? Because number one, if you do the standard pathology blood tests, such as say food, <laughs> full, bl full blood count or C-reactive protein measures, they will look normal in these individuals, okay? And the other problem is, is that if you look at the standard blood inflammatory markers, these markers that are measured under such tests, pathology tests, these markers are soluble. They're, the ones that are being measured are soluble markers. And recall from previous videos is that the issue is that the inflammatory markers they might be that are affected they might be trapped in the insoluble part of the clots meaning clots are being formed normally fibrinogen is soluble once the clots are formed then it becomes insoluble and that's how clot is being formed and if you have these inflammatory markers trapped in a the clot then the standard blood tests will not actually tell you this information whether these concentrations are affected. So as a consequence, in essence, you basically don't have any, any way of measuring it. So the, the South African authors, researchers, they proposed another way of potentially measuring this. And this is via viscoelastic hemostatic assays. The name is not important for that. Basically though that includes thrombo, thromboelastography or rotational thromboelastometry. And what does this show you? It shows you basically these, these tests can reveal an image that looks like a what the authors compared that to a shovel blade. So let me go through this because I thought this was very interesting and this is something that we might consider, perhaps doctors might consider doing this. And if you are an, are an individual suspecting you might have long COVID or issues related to prior COVID infection, or issues related to spike protein exposure, you might talk to your doctor then perhaps about doing such a test. And so let me break this down. What does it look like? Okay. So as I mentioned, the image that you get from these tests looks like a blade shovel. And this is how the authors were describing this. Ooh, by the way, we're in, I'm in like this super shallow lake <laughs> where I can literally walk across the entire lake. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> so first of all, you got, you got the shovel handle. So you've got a handle, then you've got a blade of the shovel, okay? So first, there's a handle. And the length of the handle, if you will, tells you about how coagulation factors are capable of participating in the formation of the clot. At least that's how I, I understood it. So I think the authors mentioned it, coagulation factors competence. So that if the handle 
of the shovel is very short, it means that the coagulation factors in, in individuals' blood are very competent in participating in a formation of the clots. On the other hand, if the handle is very long, it means these factors are not very, not very ready in, a, in the formation of the clot. Okay, so that's, that's the first thing. Second thing is the slope of the formation of the, of the actual shovel, of the, of the blade of the shovel. Okay, so you could either have very steep slope, so the shovel blade is made really rapidly, so it's like a straight line up. So, and that basically tells the information of fibrinogen concentration. So remember, fibrinogen is the molecule that needs to be broken down to a fibrin and then fibrin is used in the formation of clots, okay? So the higher the concentration of fibrinogen, the greater the likelihood that clots could be formed, okay? So that if the slope of the, of the shovel blade is really high, very steep, it means you are at a higher likelihood of forming clots. And if it's very shallow, so the blade of the shovel is made very gradually, it means the concentration is, is lower. Uh, the fibrinogen concentration in the blood is lower and it's decreased likelihood of, of clot formation. All right, that's the second thing. Then number three is how wide the shovel blade actually is. And that information tells you how much or how likely or, to, or the extent of interaction between the platelets and fibrin. And the greater that, that interaction is, the more, again, the more likely you are forming clots. Because remember, again, platelets are contributing factors in the formation of clots. So basically, in essence, what this means is that the greater the, the size of the shovel blade, that also informs you that you're more likely to be forming clots, okay? And then the last thing is whether the, the shovel blade tapers off at the end, whether it just starts narrowing down. And that tapering of the blade at the end of it tells you whether the fibrinolysis takes place or not. And again, what is fibrinolysis? Fibrinolysis is breakdown of of fibrin, which basically informs you how likely clots are being broken down. Once they're formed, they have to be broken down so they can be removed. So what that would mean is that if the blade continues to be flat all the way to the end, it means that fibrinolysis is not taking place. That's called fibrinolytic shutdown. And basically clots are more persistent, right, in their existence. In, on the other hand, if you have tapering off the blade, it means that there is normal fibrinolysis and that clots are formed properly, yes, but then they also are broken down properly. And then you can use this information to determine whether an individual is on one extreme or the other or in between. So you can basically determine with these assays where on the spectrum of the clot formation such an individual is, whether they are hyper, in a hypercoagulation state, meaning they are in extreme state of forma or forming clots, or whether they are in hypocoagulation state, meaning they are not forming clots. So then in the one extreme, if you're making too many clots, you are in a hypercoagulation state, it means the handle of the blade is very short. The slope of the, of, the, of the blade of the shovel, the handle of the shovel is short. The slope of the blade of the shovel is very steep. 
the blade of the shovel is very, very wide and it does not taper off at the end. So that's one extreme. That's, that would be the worst case scenario in terms of clots are very easily formed. Then the other extreme is that you're not forming clots. In that, ass, in that such an assay, what you would be observing is that the handle of the shovel is very long. The, sh the blade of the shovel is formed very gradually. So it actually starts looking more like a, imagine like a, a canoe paddle, if you will. The size of the blade is very small, very narrow, and it would taper off at the very end as well. And that would be the other extreme. And that means basically you're not forming clots. And what's unusual, remember I was telling you that long COVID or acute COVID patients can swing between these extremes with the only difference that such a state would be, you would not show any tapering off of, of the shovel blade. So this clearly shows you can see the benefit of why you could potentially use this type of test to determine where you are in the, in the coagulation state. And between those two extremes, the normal physiological state would be in, would look in between those two extremes. So that's why this could be a very good assay for doctors to use to determine in what state of coagulation an individual is and potentially at the moment might be the only type of assay available to us in terms of being able to measure this. So that hence why I really wanted to make this video as well. There's one more thing I'm going to mention that when the authors were publishing this, they published an extremely interesting figure which showed what this shovel looks like in a physiological state versus what it looks like for different SARS-CoV-2 variants. And remember, I've been talking about in all of these videos how spike protein could be contributing to the formation of these abnormal amyloid-like clots. And we've talked about this and they showed Delta variant. That Delta variant showed the greatest extreme of hypercoagulation state so that the shovel had very short handle, very wide blade. The blade was formed in a very steep manner and it was not tapering off. And correspondingly, such individuals infected with the Delta variant, this was a while back obviously, they were showing the most extreme version of these abnormal amyloid nature clots, okay? And the reason why this was so interesting is because they contrasted this against Omicron variants. And remember, we are now in the Omicron family variants. Of course, there's many different ones. Omicron family of variants have gone through its own transformation as well and its own evolution. But nevertheless, they pointed, out, pointed it out that Omicron variants were not as extreme in this blade formation as Delta. So the, the handle of the shovel was just a little bit longer. The steepness still looked the same, but the, also the shovel, the shovel blade width was not as extreme. The size of the blade was not a, as extreme as what they were seeing with the Delta. And as a consequence, once Omicron came about, the clots, these abnormal clots that were being observed in the blood of the individuals were not as extreme. They were not as crazy as with Delta. And that also might explain potentially why Delta was much more deadlier than Omicron is. We all know that Omicron, ever since Omicron came about, the disease state for individuals, infected individuals, got, became much, uh, much better. And this might help to explain why. And the reason why is because these individuals are less likely to form these e extreme abnormal clots. And that also means we could be potentially be using these type of assays 
to keep following future variants as well and see whether the pathogenicity is increasing or not. Recall that I also made a video where I discuss another theory proposed by Dr. Gerd van den Bosch and he was claiming that one of another reason why Omicron was less deadly is because the evolution of the virus resulted in reduced reduced in trans infection meaning that the virus is now was less likely to be transported to the lungs where of course it could cause damage so there was there was that theory proposed as well and indeed we no longer see the same degree of opacity in the images of lungs currently as we did at the early stages of the pandemic so that's good news obviously but here you are another possibility as well as that one of the reasons why we see such a dramatic decrease in in hospitalization and and of course even death thank goodness right is because we are no longer forming as extreme clots due to spike protein as we seen with the earlier variants and hopefully that will remain so but of course remember the virus is still mutating it's still evolving and the reason why is because we we are st it's still under immune pressure it's still being attacked and it's still responding to that attack of course that attack has to do with antibodies as well and that it and encounters and therefore the virus is still rapidly evolving and we don't know what the future will will bring but so far the signs are good that we're not dealing with such a dangerous pathogen as we did when we had to encounter the delta variant all right that's all i have for you today hope i hope you enjoyed this walk through the lake with me i just want to say thank you everyone for your support um, big time thank you for sharing the videos uh, not only did, does it help grow the channel but i've also been invited to a couple conferences one of these link is already provided for you in the description below and these would have never happened without your support so i just i want to say once again thank you for that check out my patreon account where i post other videos that do not make it to the youtube as well more controversial content and and we're gonna end here and i look forward to another installment with you in the future bye everyone see you later